sorry about that. My sister had to borrow my stool, so yeah, sorry about that little interruption. But with that out of the way, this is the T-Rex mug from Think Geek. This is a pretty cool mug, I will admit. Like, you got the nice tail, which turns into a handle. You got the legs, the puny little arms, and the head. It looks pretty cool, though I would have liked to have seen it as a feathered T-Rex, because there is some evidence that shows that T-Rex had feathers, and I hate scientific inaccuracies in pop culture, so yeah. But aside from that, this is still pretty cool nevertheless. Next up is probably my favorite gift I got this year. Shovel Knight sound effect, please! This is the Shovel Knight Shovel Blade from Think Geek. Yes, they actually made this. It's made out of a tough foam, which I like. It's very tough, it's very strong. The paint isn't the best, but it's certainly very good paint. Well, it's very good paint quality for what it's worth, because this is a really nice shovel blade. It's really awesome. It's an awesome piece of Shovel Knight merchandise. It's an awesome piece of merchandise from an awesome game. Just like... The Splatoon Water Gun. Yeah! All right! This is probably my favorite gift because it's very well made and it's awesome. Look, it's just... It's a Shovel Knight Shovel Blade toy. It's just amazing. My only real issue with it is that they don't really paint the sides. Like, they paint the front and the back, but not really the side. Like, why isn't there like a streak of blue paint when there's a streak of blue paint here? Same thing for, like, um, hold on one second. Like, right here. See, there's blue paint here around the edge. Same thing here, but nothing on the sides, which confuses me. But aside from that, it's my favorite gift I got this year, because it's awesome. Because, you know, Shovel Knight's an awesome game. Even though it's really hard, I actually haven't beaten it yet, because it's just really difficult. But, hey, it's Shovel Knight. It's still an awesome game. I'll just put that away. Moving on, we also have some Amiibos. Yes, I got some Amiibos for Christmas. Because, well, Amiibos are awesome too. And this year I got the Yoshi Yarn Amiibo! Or officially, the Yoshi's Wooly World Yarn Yoshi Amiibo. The small green one, not the larger Mega Yarn Yoshi one, but still. I also got this Amiibo of Rob. Also, this one was a Japanese import, the Yoshi one, but still. It, since Amiibos aren't region locked, it's safe to assume that it would work with my North American Wii U, because the Wii U's awesome. I'm not trying to be like an annoying fanboy or anything, because I'm not a Nintendo fanboy. Because fanboys are annoying, because, well, they are. I'm just someone who really loves Nintendo, I'm a hardcore Nintendo fan. And here is the Rob Amiibo in closer detail. Sorry if the camera quality is grainy or not. I'm not too sure yet, but if it is, just tell me in the description, it's just technical issues. It's just, well, yeah, technical issues, but still. Here is the bottom of it, for closer detail. It's 
So yeah, like, these are both rather hard to find because, you know, amiibo themselves are really hard to find because, you know, the supply is so low and the demand is so high. It's that simple. Laws of supply and demand determine the price, which is why they're so hard to find and run so for such high prices, but yeah. But anywho, Amiibos are awesome, so let's just move them to the side right here real quick, because we'll move on to the other games that I got. Well, the ones are actual real games, and not just Amiibos. So let me just get them real quick, the video games I got. Um, let me just get them. Sorry, just a bit of a pain to get. I'll just go through them one console at a time. Yeah, one console at a time sounds good. So starting off with the Nintendo 3DS, we have Astune Miku, Project Mirai, or Mirai, yeah, Project Mirai DX. I know this looks like a girls game, and, well, it's not really, it's just a game that's based off of Hastune Miku, who is extremely popular in Japan. Even though she's not an actual real person, she and the other Vocaloids, if you know who they are, are really popular in Japan. They're like the Taylor Swift of Japan. They're that popular. Anywho, this is actually in the box, so let me just get all this stuff inside it out. We got the actual game itself, these AR cards, okay, and this wallet chain. Um, I don't necessarily know what a wallet chain is. I think I do, but, eh, whatever. It's still a pretty fun game, nevertheless, and I highly recommend you check it out. Next up is Yokai Watch. This is another really fun game. I heard that this gets a lot of bashing for being a Pokemon knockoff, and I'm going to say this right now, this is not a Pokemon knockoff. Yes, it has some similarities with Pokemon, both are RPGs and both involve having little monsters fight for you, but this is a really fun game. Like, I haven't beaten it yet or anything like that, but this game is a lot of fun. Like, this is a really cool 3DS game, and it's probably one of my personal favorites I played this year since we didn't get a new Pokemon main series game this year, unlike the, the last several years before was like... 2014, the Gen 3 remakes, and X and Y in 2013, and yeah, you get the idea, but still, cool game, you should probably get it if you have a 3DS, because it's a, well, it's a really fun game, I'm just gonna say that right now. Next up is Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. This is my first ever mystery, jun sorry, mystery dungeon game. And so far, I have had a lot of fun playing it. It says right here, um, if I can zoom in closely enough, all 720 species of Pokemon, which is awesome, and it's really cool. So far, I've been playing as a Trico, named after myself, Grant, and fun fact, my partner is a Froakie named Bubble, who is my Greninja I have in my Pokemon X game, which is pretty cool as well. Like, I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do for Mystery Dungeon, but this is my first ever Mystery Dungeon game, so yeah. And finally, for the 3DS, we have Code Name Steam. Like, this had a lot of hype, and after it was released, it just faded into obscurity pretty much, and to be fair, I'm... I honestly think this game is actually pretty cool. I mean, it's not great, but it's decent. I like the concept, and the gameplay isn't too bad either. It's kind of weird, but it's a still, well, it's still pretty decent, and if you're interested in it, then you should go get it, because it's a pretty decent game for what it's worth. So far, I've been having a lot of fun with it, so yeah, you should go get it if you haven't already. 
and that's it for 3DS. So let me just put all of these back inside the Hasune Miku box. Sorry for all the background noise, it's just... I can't really do anything about it. I might have gotten rid of it in Audacity, but I'm not too sure about that yet. I might have, but I'm not too sure. If you can hear background noise, just tell me in the description. Like, I'm trying to see if I can fix that too, but yeah. So that's it for Nintendo 3DS. Moving on to the PlayStation 3, we have four games. First of all, we have two World War II air combat games, Birds of Steel and Air Conflicts Pacific Carriers. And Birds of Steel actually says right here, strap in and do battle rewriting World War II. That's pretty awesome. Like, my dad got these two games so we could play them together, but sadly they're only one player each, which is a shame. Like, I can prove it prove it right here, if this can focus. Same thing here, which really sucks, but I might play these soon enough. They seem pretty cool, and they might get me into dogfight games. You know, the ones where it's about like air combat and stuff, because I never played like a Star Fox game before, and I have some interests, some like interests in getting into the series, but I'm not a huge fan of dogfights yet, so I hope that these games will help me get into Star Fox once Star Fox Zero for the Wii U gets released in early 2016. Next up, we have two Call of Duty games. Now, I'm going to say this right now, I am not a fan of Call of Duty. I think the series is really, really bland, unfortunately, because Activision just, like, Activision just milks it, like, they just milk it out for money every single year, and I am really sick of it. Which is a real shame, too, because there are some other games that are way better than these. So why did I get them for Christmas? Simple. Z well, the Zombies Mode. The Zombies Mode is actually a lot of fun in Call of Duty, I will admit, even in the modern ones. Even in the new... Like, even in the newer games, where most of the Call of Duty games suck, they at least have great zombie modes. I will admit, the Nazi zombies from Call of Duty World at War was a ton of fun, like, and so are the other zombie modes in Call of Duty as well. Because I actually really love zombie mode, and it's the only good thing about modern Call of Duty nowadays. Sadly, you have to pay to get zombies on this one, which sucks, but... Yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of Call of Duty, so yeah. I'm so glad I have these, though, because, like I said, Zombies is awesome. And by Zombies, I meant the zombie mode, but yeah, you get what I mean. And finally, we have the Wii U games, starting off with Yoshi's Woolly World. As you can see, I already have this... Yarn Yoshi Amiibo, so this will work perfectly with Yoshi's Woolly World! Yoshi, Yoshi, Yoshi! So yeah, this got a lot of good reviews, and after I was somewhat disappointed with the only decent Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, I really hope this one makes up for it, for its cute art style because it looks really awesome and I can't wait to play it. Actually, I haven't played it yet or any of the other Wii U games, but I do plan to play them soon enough. It's just I haven't gotten the time to because I've been actually a little, little bit busy with some other things, but I'll get to that later. Next up is Injustice Gods Among Us. Now, I know, like, there's that superior PlayStation 4 version, but I don't have a PS4. Nor do I plan getting one anytime soon, so yeah, that's why I just got the Wii U version for Christmas instead. And, like, this was made by the guys who brought us Mortal Kombat. If I can zoom in closely, it says, From the creators of Mortal Kombat, 
this is pretty much Mortal Kombat, but take out the Mortal Kombat characters for the ones from the DC Universe. We actually had one before in the case of, well, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe. I actually have that for the PS3, but I wanted to get this game because I heard it got a lot of positive reviews and stuff, so it seems pretty cool, so I'll definitely play this soon. Next up is Xenoblade Chronicles X. Now, this game, like, I haven't played any of these Wii U games yet, but from what I've heard, this game is incredible. Like, I actually, I've already heard about how great the Xenoblade series is. I never played the first one because I never heard of it when it first came out in 2012, so that's a shame, but still, this is a really cool game, I suppose. I haven't played it yet, but I do plan to soon. Like, right after this video is made, or starting tomorrow, perhaps. And it just looks awesome. I can't wait to spend the rest of my Christmas vacation playing it, or most of the rest of my winter break playing it anyway, because I got some other stuff I need to get done, too. But still. And finally, we have Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Now, I heard this game actually got some disappointing reviews, but I only got it because it's a tennis game, and I'm pretty sure it's a good family game to get the family together because, yeah, I mean, it does look pretty fun. I heard that this game got some okay reviews as well, so it seems promising, and you can use your amiibos as well, which is pretty cool. Hopefully, you can use this one to summon Yoshi in the game. I'm pretty sure Nintendo allows us to do that, I think. I think Nintendo would put that in there, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Nintendo put it in there. I hope. Now that's it for the video games. Moving on, we then have some history stuff. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you or anything. This is actually some pretty cool gifts. First of all, I have this This Day in History History Channel calendar for 2016. It's an advent calendar. So, yeah, this is a pretty cool history calendar. I haven't opened it up yet. I'll open it up on New Year's Day. Once the... well, you get the idea. So, anywho, this seems pretty cool, so I can't wait to open it on New Year's Day or New Year's Eve, so yeah, this looks pretty cool. So, anywho, let's move on. We then have this DVD set of The World in Conflict, which is a World War II documentary and stuff, because World War II and most 20th century history really fascinates me, because it really is interesting, like, World War II, and it's not just that, there's also the Cold War, and World War I, the Gulf War, all those proxy wars in the Cold War, those mini wars in the Cold War that weren't even proxy wars, like the Iran-Iraq War, if you would argue that's a proxy war, perhaps. I mean, both the Soviets and the Americans funded Saddam Hussein's Iraq against, well, against Iran, so I'm guessing that's not a proxy war in the Cold War, I suppose, maybe? I don't know, but this is a DVD set. I do plan to watch it someday, it looks pretty cool. I also have another DVD set. This one. That's too big to show on, on the entire screen for the entire camera to show. This is World War II Special 8 DVD Collection of Fascinating Documentary and Incredible Original Footage, which is pretty cool. And this actually can slide out. There's this foam. Let me get that out of the way. You can see all of the DVDs right here. Let me just place it back in here correctly, so it will fit comfortably back into its case. Sorry, the entire camera can't show it, because it's such a small screen, so yeah. This is still a pretty cool gift as well, I hope to watch these DVDs someday as well. Next up, we have some Webkins, because you know I have my own Webkin's plush series of videos called The Webkin Show, and this year I got, hold on, let me just 
get these two amiibos out of the way now because I want to show you them. We have the Chinese dragon and a chicken. The Thai, the, sorry, I wasn't saying Thai dragon, I was saying Chinese dragon because, you know, this is a Chinese dragon, not a dragon from Thailand, but still, I have a lot of, like, I have a good idea for an episode of the Webkin show for this dragon, because, like, it, be, it could be sort of like a Kung Fu episode or something, like a, like a sort of martial arts episode or something, with this guy being, like, a sort of, like, a master or something, and... Yeah, I think that could work. I also love the design they have in the Chinese dragon on how it's so wavy and stuff. Like the confetti, like, spikes on it and stuff. The mane and stuff, like, I love the choices of colors of brown, black, red, white. No, there's no white, sorry. Gold, red, green, yellow, black, more gold. Like, this looks like an actual Chinese dragon, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Sorry for stuttering there. This isn't scripted, like I said before. And we have the chicken, the classic Webkin's chicken. I might have some I might have some ideas for it. I'll probably make an adoption video of these two with with my screen capture software tomorrow, perhaps, maybe later tonight, though that's unlikely, so yeah. These are some pretty cool gifts as well. Now we'll just put them away, and I also got this for Christmas. It's just like a sort of like a toy lightsaber that flashes all different types of colors. Hold on. I decided to take that off of the screen so I don't give anybody an epileptic or epileptic seizure. Sorry if I can't pronounce that right, but I don't want to make a sort of like a repeat of the whole Porygon Electric Soldier Porygon incident. If you ever heard of that controversy, but anywho, let's move on. We also got some books. Let me just put this here. We got this book on composting and how to make proper compost, because for those who don't know, I'm in, well, I'm a very eco-friendly person, so, like, this would be very helpful because we all know we don't want wasted food to go to the dumpster, or not dumpster, landfills, so, because that would be massive pollution, so, this will be very helpful. Not to mention, after the food's decomposed, it can be used as fertilizer in gardens and stuff, which will be also pretty cool as well. I'm, I'm going to be right back. I need a drink of water so I can continue talking before I don't... So, like, so I don't run out of breath, of course. I'll be right back.